Lighthouses and fog horns, they have saved lives and guided great ships to safe harbor for centuries. Like all things, technology has changed the way lighthouses operate. Lights and horns are now automatic, and lighthouse keepers just make sure everything is in proper working order. Today, across Canada, there are now just 70 lighthouses that are manned. That's down from 700 at the turn of the century. In the coming months, a further reduction in the number of manned stations is planned. Tonight on the NTV Evening News, we begin a special two-part series on the Keepers of the Light. Paula Dyke reports from Puffin Island in Bonavista Bay. It's a desolate spot, just 10 minutes from the nearest community by boat, but when the winds blow and the seas are up, it might as well be 10,000 miles away. Puffin Island is located in northern Bonavista Bay. It's one of 32 remaining light stations in Newfoundland. And like all the others, right now, its future is uncertain. Also uncertain is the possibility of going ashore on Puffin Island on any given day. For the past eight days, the waves have been too high and the winds far too strong. Today, the water is low and going ashore requires clambering over slippery rocks. Lightkeepers Tom Bragg and Lynn Howell, along with the island's golden retriever, meet us at the slip and wheel up supplies they got earlier today. Tom Bragg says things have changed in the 26 years he's worked on the island, from the equipment to the way supplies are delivered. It's been a lot of changes from the, from the time I came here. We was able to get our own coal and bring up our own coal by hand. And wheel our way up the barrels by hand, 180 from the fuel to get up over the island. Everything was all by hand then, the first time I came here, like, you know. While the equipment has become automated, there's still lots for the light keepers to do, making sure that the bulbs are all working in the lights and that the foghorn still blares and keeping an eye out for stray boats. Your, your, your day starts 2 o'clock in the morning. That's when your day starts. Well, that's, your, that's when the watch comes on, eh? 2 o'clock, so you get up in your boot and you check your equipment, check your batteries, check to see your lights is flashing all right. See everything is under control in the worst, so then you come back and get a cup of coffee and you walk on through the night to that then. There haven't been any major disasters in the area. Tom Bragg says most of the problems are with small boats in trouble. And if they can't help themselves, they can always find help from fishermen in nearby Greens Pond. Yeah, well, we have some small boats sometimes, like, you know, in the winter more especially. Get caught with in, in the house or something like that, you know. We help them out by, uh, Brett's getting another guy from Greens Pond and go out and with bigger out for more or something and get them under trouble, like, you know, that, that, that. After tending the light for 28 days, the shift changes and the men get to go home for four weeks. Tom has four grown children, and he and his wife, Frances, make the most of the time he's at home. Well, she just waits for the time to roll around again until I get back in. And what we're going to do, then we make our station, then, you know. Back on the island, the light keepers spend free time making things. Right now, they're building a wooden boat, and they've made concrete flower pots in the shape of roosters, all from a mold they found washed up on shore. But despite the crafts and daily work, Tom Bragg says the hours on Puffin Island can get to be lonely. Lonely, yes, so you're putting in a lot of lonely hours, a lot, a lot of lonely hours. More especially, you say again, though, know, from now on, and when the days gets long, the nights and all gets long, and everything else, and weather gets bad, and you still have to go around, you know, back and forth to the fog alarm belling, and this and that, like, you know, shaking on your equipment, make sure everything is working, and the horn is blown, and everything else. On Puffin Island, for the NTV Evening News, I'm Paula Dyke. On the life of a lighthouse keeper. It is a story we tell even as the federal government studies how many of the 32 manned lighthouses in this province will they automate. The process of deciding which stations will close has already begun. Tonight, Paula Dyke's second report on the fate of Newfoundland's lighthouses. At the turn of the century, there were 700 lighthouses along Canada's coastline. Today, just 70 remain. Since 1991, 24 light stations in Newfoundland have been automated, and now the Canadian Coast Guard plans to do the same with the remaining 32. Ray Brown is manager of Marine Navigational Services with the Coast Guard. 
He says technology has made it possible to completely replace lighthouse keepers with machinery. Well, the intention is that, you know, we can monitor our, our navigational aids and provide a reliable navigational aid service from any site by remote monitoring and with reliable equipment without having an attendant on site. Ray Brown says no site has been given priority as yet. Instead, the Coast Guard will start a consultation process with government and other interest so groups. The plan is this to, uh, to automate and de-staff the remaining light stations. But part of this process will be a consultation with, first of all, our Coast Guard employees, second with other government departments with whom we're providing some services to from our light stations, and then the third consultation part will be with any affected or interested parties in the public. Part of the Coast Guard's workforce adjustment policy, laid off light keepers will be placed in other jobs or offered retirement packages. For veteran light keepers like Tom Bragg of Puffin Island, doing something else after 26 years of tending the lights seems unlikely. Well, not much like we do now, you know, we're getting that age now, and I suppose I'll get a pension out of her some kind, so that'll be good enough for me you now. Get our family reared, so we'll knock on now from, from that, you know. The stations will close but the buildings will remain. Ray Brown hopes that community groups will take an interest and turn some of the lighthouses into museums or other tourist attractions. I would hope that at the end of the day that not all the structures will be lost open, that communities or development association will take over some of the structures and that we can still provide a, a marine environment out there in terms of structures and light stations. For years, lighthouses have acted as beacons along Newfoundland's rugged coast. In the next few weeks, the Coast Guard will decide which of these lighthouses to keep open and which to close. On Puffin Island, for the NTV Evening News, I'm Paul.